It's like that in friendship. It's like that in business. It's like that in everything in life. Imagine if you just got clear on what is your definition of your 10 out of 10 in your relationships, in your interviews, in your, the people that you want to be. Know what it is that you want, speak it into existence, and guess what the world's going to do? Start manifesting that into your life because you're resonating from that energy. It's very, very simple. And we take away these labels that you're putting onto yourself. And then we clear the slate and we create a new possibility for you right and it's a new look every single day is a new day for you to create and for you to impact and for you to live the life that you actually want to do hello and welcome to the real success show i'm your host candace mama if you are looking for motivation in your life, if you are seeking a purpose, if you don't know how to start your career, then today's guest is for you. Her name is Sonia Zabatani, and she has founded La Tribe Media. She is a 10 out of 10 coach, and she is filled with energy. But before we jump in, make sure you are liking, sharing, and subscribing. Now, without further ado, here's Sonia. How are you, Sonia? I'm so good. How are you? I'm lovely. I've been so looking forward to our conversation. Me too. Can we just talk about, yes. can we just talk about how beautiful you are? Like, can we just like get that out of the way or are we just not even going like, to, wait, I have to do a story about this. Like, look at, you when, when so you start an interview, but, but she's so gorgeous. Like, look at this. But why are you, right? Oh, I don't know. I'm so ready for you. you. <laughs> you're so sweet now that we got that out of the way wow <laughs> oh man thank you so much I mean I've been watching your videos and you are absolutely mind-blowing let me just start there before I do like welcome but I just want to <laughs> tell you your energy is insane thank you so much yeah it's it's an energy that doesn't go away like this is it like that's the, that's the energy it's on at all times it's like that's why even this morning I'm like, you know, I'm so happy you didn't even ask me like, oh, Sonia, what quite quite like here's the questions. I'm like, I don't care about the questions. I'm here, I'm fully present, and you take it wherever you want. I was like, yes, I love real success and I'm like all in. So oh, thank you, Sonia. And thank you for taking the time to be on the real success show. And you know, when I was looking at who you are as a person, as you said. Your energy does not look like it's being put on. It just genuinely looks like you are one of those people that wake up in the commercial and you know, the people who jump out of bed in the morning, that looks like who you are. Is that accurate? <laughs> well, no, the jumping out of bed. No, well, you know what the, the, the reality is? Yes, I do jump out of bed to run to my kids to be like, let's go to school. Let's go to school. Let's go to school. So, so yes, it absolutely is. But I'm just, I, you know, it's funny when I was growing up, people used to always tell me like, oh, you know, you'll see when you grow up, you, you won't have that much energy or, oh, you'll see when you get married. Oh, you'll see when you have kids. It was all of these milestones. And um, I just I'm not running out and I'm pacing up and I'm I've just always loved life so much. And I'm like, I'm, I'm really excited to for every day, like every day gets me really fired up. Oh, I love hearing that. And I love how you communicate it. And so, I mean, I saw that you were actually born in Morocco, Casablanca, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, yes. And so your journey was, you, don't, you didn't know your father, and then you got adopted by your stepdad. And so how was that for you? I mean, you know, now you're talking about like, you're so energized and you love life so much. Like at that time, were you still loving life or was it a bit of a difference, Sonia? Well, it's funny. So so I'm, I'm launching my book in February. Right. And I, and I wrote about this in my book and I, and I got very, very, you know, vulnerable and very into the story because I think the story is so important. You know, I was, I was uh, born in Casablanca and my dad um, in, my dad was Moroccan. My mom was uh, Quebecois. So from, from Quebec and my dad was Muslim and so I was born Muslim and my mom didn't want me to, to be raised uh, she wanted me to come, she wanted to come back to Canada and, and, you know, to be with the family here and to be raised here, more of like a Western um, culture. 
And uh, so it was really interesting because when I was growing up, I, I moved to Montreal at the age of three. But when I was growing up, I always felt like I didn't belong, you know, like I was such an outcast. I had this like big curly hair and always wanted to dance and always, you know, I, I really didn't fit in and I didn't fit in with my family here on my Quebecois side. And I just, I, you know, I always wanted to find out more about my roots. And when my, my mom uh, met my stepdad, I was nine and he was just a great man. Like he was the right man for my mom, you know, like checked out all the right things as a father too. And uh, it's funny because when I met, when I was 17 and I met my, my, bio, my, my brother, like my biological brother, and, and then I met my Moroccan side of the family that's in Montreal, it's like, it's like, I was like, okay, like, this is it. Like they, they, you know what, it's like this warm blood, like everyone looks like me, they dance like me, they act like me. Um, so it really is so interesting, the power of your genes and of where you come from. And uh, yeah, that, that, that was something that was really, really special for me because I was able to get to my roots too. Oh, that is profound. And for so many people, when they get disconnected from that root, you know, and they feel that disconnect, it's something they carry throughout their whole life. It's something that shapes them and they can say, you know, Sonia, you seem like you've turned out so great, but my life, I still look at myself as unworthy or as unlovable or as uh, like someone who doesn't fit in. So how mm -hmm. did you manage to still become so strong having had that kind of, you know, a turmoil that you were facing within yourself? Well, for me, I became, a, I, 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 the reason why I'm a coach is because I had to do all this work. So what happened was I really, I just didn't fit in and I, you know, I didn't have a good modeling of what was an ideal relationship. Um, I was always extremely driven because I was like, well, I'm not going to need anybody. I'm just going to do it on my own. Right. So I worked really, really hard. And I, and I, once I'm clear on something, I just go. So when I finished my school um, university, I moved to LA right away and I got scouted um, to do like some fitness modeling and acting. And when I got there, I was like, this isn't it. Like I'm, I need to figure out myself. Like I need to find out like what, what's going on here. I had, I was proposed to three times. I said, no, three different people. And I was like, there's something wrong with me. Like, let me figure myself out. So that's when I got into personal development and I went deep. Like I, you know, started from landmark. I did all the Tony Robbins. I did NLP. I went deep into relationship training and I, I really unstuck all of these limiting beliefs that I had about myself. And I really created an identity that I was aligned with. Like I was good being that outcast. I was good living in my own world, in my own rules. I was good not being, you know, not everybody didn't have to like me. And I was good with that. I didn't need the validation from my stepdad or other people anymore. So I really became this kind of, and then I hopped up on stage and I was like, all right, this is where I'm supposed to be. Like, this is the gift. And then I started coaching and speaking all over the U S and I was 26. Wow. So how yeah. long did that take you? I mean, you know, you say you immersed yourself in this process of just learning. When did you start the process and how long did it take you before you were on stage at 26? So I started, um, I would say at the age of, well, right when I graduated, literally like I wrote my last exam and I moved. So I never got the ceremony. I couldn't care less about these things. Like I was like, just, just, you know, mail me my degree. Thanks. We're good. <laughs> and I, I literally that, and my dad at the time, uh, owned guest jeans, the, the fashion company in Canada. So he really wanted me to go into the family business. And I was, I was, you know, working since the age of like, I don't know. Well, since the age of nine, I was being dropped off at, in the business. So I, my head is, I could sit with you and you could tell me any idea you want and I'll turn it into a business. Like that's what I do sleeping in my, so for me to scale a business or to turn a business or to like, that's literally my, how my brain works, like generating money. That's how I, how I work. But I realized that, you know, in order for me to get really good at coaching, I need to understand the life coaching part. And I, I need to understand how to make people shift their limiting beliefs so that they can become the person that manifests that money, that scales that business, 
that, you know, do, does all of that. So to go back and just answer your question, how long it took me when I dropped into LA, literally within a month, I realized I needed to, to get into deep personal development. I did a few years of that. And right away when I started speaking, I, 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 that was it. Like I, and then my first speech, I had 700 people, then 1500 people. And at 26, I was doing one-on-ones charging 500 an hour and speaking on stages all over the U S. Oh, that is so profound. And as you were working with different people, and you realize that these self-limiting beliefs do take a bit of time to change. Did you find that there was a common thread in between the people? Yeah, of course. So absolutely. And you know, it's funny because I am running, I'm, I'm doing a 30 days to master your mindset course right now. And last week was about shifting your limiting beliefs. And, um, it's a, it's, you know, it's a four week process and it's so beautiful because it's that key it's the key to your life. It's the key to unlocking opportunity, possibility, and next steps. You know, like I'm starting a new, a new course. It's called 30 days to master your body next. Right. So I'm starting it November 1st. And even in your body, if you're not losing weight, if you're not at peak performance, if you're not, you know, manifesting the body that you want and the peak performance, the energy, it's not the diet. Like it's not like, it's not the keto. It's not the, because what you're going to do is you're going to get on the diet, you're going to lose weight, and then you're going to go back. And that's the problem because until you shift those limiting beliefs that are keeping you in this space that are keeping you stuck, you're always going to go back. So I could put you on, you know, Weight Watchers, uh, no carb or a light carb, uh, this workout, Pilates, this, it's not about that. It's about your mindset. And it's about these limiting beliefs that you created and made real. And until we shift that, you're, ju- you're not going to get not the results in your body, not the results in your mindset. You won't get the relationships that you want with others or with yourself. And you're not going to be able to truly scale your business to a level of unlimited potential. Mm, that is so profound. And I've seen that with certain people, they can achieve massive success in their career, but maybe relationships become an issue or their body issues become Mm -hmm. a thing. So what is that disconnect between being able to master your business life, but not master another area of your life? Because you haven't done the work. You haven't done the work. Here's the beauty. Okay. So I I do coaching one-on-one and then I do group coaching and I do events and speaking and retreats and everything. If I have, and I have like, massive CEOs that'll sit with me, all the money in the world. Yeah, great. But that's a skill set. And those are habits and a game plan that they've mastered in one area of their life. But that doesn't mean they're happy. For me as a coach, and that's literally like coaching session number one. It's like, I speak about confidentiality. Everything's confidential because obviously I'm pretty big on social. Everything's confidential. And number two is I'm a business and life coach. I could scale your business and make you make more money or start up your business while I'm sleeping. That's the easiest thing. But for you to have a game plan in your business and how to make more money and all that, it won't make you happier. You have to have a game plan for your life where you feel like you're a good mom, you're a good wife, you're a good girlfriend, you're a good husband, you're a good person to yourself. You're good in your body. Like, that's why I really look at things and that's what I, what I speak about in my book. It's not just one category of your life, but for you to have a fulfilled life, I want you to have a happy life. Like I want you to be happy with yourself so that you start to resonate on a higher frequency. And then all of a sudden you love your life. Mm. Wow. And that comes with a lot of healing. So do you touch on forgiveness at all or releasing of pain at all as you're teaching and coaching? Of course, of course. And you know, what's happened and is so beautiful is that it's like you're carrying this for years and years and years and years. You know, when we went through last week on the, on the limiting belief work, we went back to your childhood. This is, these are beliefs that you made true, right? That you're actually thinking that, I'm not good enough is a fact, right? You made it true. And now you're seeing it everywhere in the world. So we have to go back. And usually it's you at seven, eight, nine, 10. Some event happened to you and you made it mean that you're not good enough. But it's only the meaning that you put to the event. 
if it's the event on its own, it doesn't, it doesn't have that meaning, but it's just that you put that there. And until we realize what's that event, what meaning did you put into it? And is that even real? Like, is it even real that you're not good enough? Right? Is it even real that you're never going to, you know, be successful or that money doesn't buy you happiness or that, you know, you're too intimidating for men or that all of these limiting beliefs that you made true, you're carrying. And now you're 20, 30, 40, 50, and you're carrying these beliefs since you're eight. So imagine, imagine like once we shift through that, it's like, it's this weight that comes off of you and you're like, oh my, what? it's not even true. Mm, that is so profound. And I think it hits a nail on the head. At this time, everyone's going through like what I refer to as a collective trauma. You know, 2020, 2021, there was no one that was not touched by what has happened. And a lot of people I've been finding have been experiencing a lot of fear. So they'll say, Sonia, you know, I get you so brave, you're so powerful, you're so impactful, mm. but I'm afraid because my life fell apart, my life savings, my partner, this, that. Yes. And how do people start to pick up their lives or start navigating through fear during this time? Ah, uh, it's so beautiful. And it's, you know, the, the, the beauty of all of this is like, it's through love, gratitude, and empathy. Like you, even though you are going through it, every single morning you wake up in gratitude, like every single morning, no matter what, there's something that you're grateful for. And every single night, there's something that you did right, that you won. It's just people stop celebrating themselves. They stop tracking their wins and all they track is what they didn't do. You know, they look at their to-do list and I see it every day. It's like, they go, oh, I didn't do this and I didn't do that. Okay, cool. But what did you do? What did you accomplish? What was the high of your day? How did you win? You know, and what I do is I bring them back to their values, right? I bring them back to their values. Like, what do you actually value? And I bring them back to why are they even doing it? Because if you don't know why you're doing it, it's so easy to just get distracted. And then to say, you know, oh, well, and then you'll start labeling yourself. I'm lazy. I procrastinate. I'm in fear. You're completely stopping yourself and you're putting everything at this, like on top of that. Right. And then it becomes this unsurmountable mountain that just holds you stuck. And that's the, the, probably the number one thing that I, that I deal with through COVID has been that people are just stuck. They're paralyzed by fear and they're stuck. And the way to just kind of unpeel it and unpeel it and unpeel it in a really, really kind and gentle way, you know, and to bring them back to themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if you, if we're able to bring you back to who you are, and then we open that up and say, you know, that you are kind and you are good enough and you are, and we take away these labels that you're putting onto yourself. And then we clear the slate and we create a new possibility for you. Right. And it's a new look. Every single day is a new day for you to create and for you to impact and for you to live the life that you actually want to do. But we have to make sure that you're actually aligned with that and you know that you mm. have the power to do that. Mm. The words bring back to yourself, I think, are incredible because I think we do get so disconnected from ourselves. And the more things fall apart, the more we feel like, oh, you know, I'm getting further and further away from my dream or the person I'm supposed to be. I think that becomes even more devastating. But for people who just say, okay, I'm going, I'm currently going through a divorce, Sonia. Yeah. What are some things I should be doing at this very moment to start picking myself back up and start figuring my life out? It's so, it's so funny too. It's like, that's one of the biggest struggles as well as relationships. And again, the, the reason why I'm doing these 30 day uh, courses is we did 30 day mindset because it always starts with your mindset, no matter what relationships, your business, your body, everything, it goes back to your mindset. Okay. Then we go to body. And then in December, it's all about relationships because that is one of the things that have struggled so much. First of all, during COVID too, nobody signed up for 24 hour marriage. Nobody signed up for that. We're not meant to that, do that. You know, I have a client too this morning that was like, 
you know, I, 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 I live with my husband in a, in a little, in a condo and I see him every single day with my kids. He works from home. I work from home. They've never dealt that. We were not meant to, to live like this with another person. So we have to create new boundaries. We have to create new rules. We have to create new communication and we have to get to know each other again. Right? So what I, what I, what I always tell my clients and when I take them through is like, you know, before you kind of just throw it out, before you throw out and you say, you know what, this isn't working for me, do the work on yourself. You know, it's, it's so easy to blame the other person and, you know, you're not that it's like, it's so easy. And I hear it every single day, do the work on yourself. What do you need? What do you, you know, what's your love language? How do you want to be loved? What's your attachment styles? How do you like do the work so that when you do look at your partner, it's not looking from, I need to be validated. I need to be the, no, I can actually complete my needs. And now let me communicate to you what I need in this relationship as well. Mm. I love, love, love that. Because I think that is a part that we so, you know, we try and run away from, you know, and um, I saw a beautiful quote the other day that said, it's incredible what human beings will do in order to outrun themselves. And I thought about it and I was like, that is so true, right? We expect people to fulfill parts of ourselves that we aren't willing to fulfill. And yeah. that's where the miscommunication comes in. And you said you were writing your book. What brought this about? Uh, I just think it's so like, for me, I'm, I'm so aligned with my greatest value, which is impact. I, I, I live for that. I long for that. That's why, you know, when I was asked to do this podcast, I'm like, yes, absolutely. Like, the more, the more I can impact and the more I can give, you know, someone tools to be able to live their best life. Like I, my audience, like my, my, I'm very, very active over social media because every single day I show up and I'm consistent. I show up on my stories and I, and I tell them to wake up and they'll see me work out and they'll see me with the kids and they'll see me because the, the thing is, it's like, we need a new superhero. We need a new version of women that can actually achieve it. And I don't like the, oh, balance at all. It sounds so silly. It's like, but if, if my definition of my 10 out of 10 life, you know, the, 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 the book is called how to live your 10 out of 10 life. It's my methodology. And I take them through eight steps. But if my definition is I want to be a mom that is super present with my kids that can travel, they come on my retreats, they'll come and see me on stage. They get dropped off at my office. They get, like, I'm really like that mom that wants my kids involved in this and, and, and living in that. That's my definition of it. It's like, why would society tell me that I can't have that? I can have that. You know, my definition as a wife is yes, I'm very present, but I'm also very involved in my business. And twice a week, I work from my business. I go, I take care of my kids. I go back in here and then I create, I do my group coachings. I do my speaking act, and it works for us. My definition of who I am as a friend is my phone. I don't even look at, have zero notifications, but at some point I'll get back to you and I'm good with that. You know, we, we have to go back to source and relook at one second here. Let's reset because we're, we're raising a genuine generation that is stuck on social media, that is stuck on TikToks and this and that. I, I looked at my daughter. My daughter is eight years old. She's, there's only one other kid in her class that doesn't have a phone. Like I'm very anti that. That's crazy at eight years old. That's never been before. Right. So what, what I want to give is I want to give people tools. I want to give them tools that can say, listen, let's go back. What does your definition of a 10 out of 10 life look like in your mindset, in your body, in your relationship, in your business, right? What do you want? And what makes you happy? Do you know how many times I ask this and people have no, what do you mean, Sonia? Well, what makes you happy? They don't know. So for me, the book was something where I always wanted to write a book, always. It, and because to me, it's a way to, to impact even more. It's a way of going here. Here's my methodology. Here's your step one. Like you want to take your life to the next level. You want to live a 10 out of 10 life. Here you go. And then let's play. Now you can 
come and do, you know, a 30 day course, or you can do, you know, a retreat with me or a one, then we can take it longer. But for me, it's my greatest gift to be able to impact as many people as I can. Oh, and was there a chapter that you wrote that you really loved writing? Yes and no. I, I, I didn't love writing it, but I love that I was able to write it. I, uh, I, my mom passed away, um, four years ago. And one of the, one of, one thing that I, that I, I, you know, as a coach, I'm, I'm really, really good at giving you, like, I'll be about you. I'm really all about that, you know, about the audience, about you, about what they need, what they need. And I, and I don't really share a lot about me. It's like, when you ask about my story, it almost makes me like, yeah, yeah, whatever, but let me help. And with, and I understand that people really get the greatest impact through story. I get it. It's just something that I wasn't doing a lot of because I was so focused on helping other people. And my story was, it's a big story. Um, so the book allowed me to be vulnerable, to share my story and to show that yeah, maybe over socials or anything, or sometimes you see people and it looks like they have it all, you know, but they, everyone deals with deep, deep pain and everyone deals with deep struggle. And the more you stretch yourself and the more public you are, and the more, the more, you know, the, 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 the stretch is a big stretch. And so for me on chapter eight, where it's like celebrating your wins and everything and embracing the struggle, I talk about how life sometimes just isn't fair because when I lost my mom four years ago, she was 56 of cancer and she had pancreatic and liver cancer and it just wasn't fair. Like she was healthy. She was wonderful. She shouldn't have like cancer was just, it wasn't fair. It was, and for me, it was the greatest struggle of my life because I'm a coach. I help people for a living. I'm really good when I can help. I'm not very good when I cannot help. And cancer and, and death and dealing with, with, with pain that you cannot help is something on another level. So was I happy about it? That it was the hardest chapter for me to write but I was happy that I was opening up and being vulnerable and allowing myself to share this story because those are the stories that help the most, you know, because talking about how you can make an extra zero in your bank account. Yeah. Yeah. Who cares? But talking about how you can keep living your life with happiness and, and, you know, raise empathetic kids and be a good mom and all this kind of stuff while you have to also deal with the loss of a parent or a child or someone that you love beyond when it's not fair is a whole nother that's a whole nother struggle hmm. i had chills as you were speaking about that because i think it is something that is going to touch so many people listening to this right now because as you said it is through that authentic storytelling that people really connect and yeah. you also mentioned something as you were sharing your story that being a public figure because that is what you are especially on social media how did you manage to balance the two worlds because your brand is so motivating and so powerful yeah. and so impactful while dealing with something so profoundly sad and devastating for anyone I shared it I don't see I don't my brand is not something that's disconnected to me, you know, I, I, I run, I also manage a lot of big speakers brands and I, and I build their personal brand and I help them with, with their whole account. But there's something so beautiful about having a brand that is completely you. The reason why I convert, like I announced a, a, a free masterclass call two days ago, I had 300 signups within four hours, like just on stories. I've, I didn't even do like, I had 500 within under a day. And the only reason why I convert like I convert is because people trust me. They know me so well. They know my kids, they know my team, and they know that I show up no matter what, I'm consistent. And I'm not trying to make it pretty. 
it, the loss of my mom, I shared it and I shared the struggle because it's not about me. Like I'm so past ego. Like, I don't care. I don't care if you find me pretty. I don't care if you like, I don't care about that. To me, it's, it's the message. It's the consistency. It's showing up for your audience that are, that are needing it. And I, and I know that my platform is one that my girls wake up every morning and they watch my stories. They go to bed every night and their husbands are hearing like my, <laughs> my voice next to them. So I, I, and I want to have a brand that is me. So if I'm having good days, you'll know. If I'm having big wins, I'll share it. If I'm having a shitty day, I'll share that too. Cause that's real. Mm. And the intentionality behind that, because that sounds very intentional because it's something that people would be like, yeah, of course, Sonia, like that makes sense. Be real on social media. But even people who aren't trying to build a personal brand struggle with being real on social media. Yeah. So how did you approach that? And did you always know that was what you were going to do when you were starting to build your brand? Uh, it's such a great question. When I started coaching, okay, and I started speaking, I had a, 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 because I was so in the space of big speakers and, you know, in the women's side, there's not a lot of, of female speakers. And I was looking at, cause I knew them personally. And I was like, I don't, I'm so not aligned with this because I would see them on stage and, you know, and then they were, it was completely a different story in their own personal life. And they felt like they were stuck on this like big brand that had to be perfect. So when their relationships were crumbling, but they're taking out a course on how to live the perfect relationship. It was so disaligned. So I didn't want to be that. I didn't want to be the person where it's like, oh, you know, coach Sonia is like this perfect, like, mom. no, I don't want that because I don't want to have to live up to that. I want that, that I can be so vulnerable with you and tell you, oh my God, this morning, my kid, I had a foot in my face. I had a bum in my thing. Like, and that's me. So, so and I'm really okay with me. So I don't need you to like me. I like me. So from that space of me knowing I'm enough and me knowing that I'm not tied to, you know, a certain look on, over socials or what certain people think about me, that's why I can just show up and just be enough. I don't have to be putting on some show for you or asking you the questions before. I don't care. I just want to show up and have a beautiful conversation with you who I think is absolutely phenomenal. And hopefully we are going to impact so many people from this conversation. Mm, that is so beautiful. And so many women struggle with what you are just clearly embodying and with, with something you've clearly, clearly worked so hard to achieve, which is I like me. I mean, those words aren't synonymous with, especially women. I think a lot of yeah. people in the world, I don't want to discount men, but how do you even start that journey when the whole world is telling you that you should not like yourself? It's actually a sin for you as a woman to have the audacity to like yourself. Where do women, women begin? Pen and paper, and they start today. Pen and paper, they start today. Pen and paper, and they start, okay, well, what do I like about me? And then you're going to be so uncomfortable with it. And you're going to write it down and then you're going to say, okay, well, you know, tell me more about you. Well, I'm a good mom. A lot of people, will go, I'm a good mom. Okay, cool. Why? How do you know you're a good mom? Oh, because I, you know, because I do their lunches, because I do their thing. And how do you know you're a good friend? How do you know you're good? Like learn about you. You never did the work, you know, you never did the work. And the problem is then they are so concerned about what other people think but they're not your people to begin with. You know, it goes like that on social, on building your personal brand. And it goes like that in real life too. My community on my account is I literally, every time I do events, every time I do group, every there, it's the same people. It's the same people because I'm so aligned with my brand. I know who I'm speaking to. I know my girls. I know my guys. They're, they're, they want more. They want to support each other. They have to support each other. So it starts with you. And then if I, if I ever get hate or something like that, I know they're not, they're not aligned to my community. They shouldn't be here anyways. Like sometimes I'll get like a, a comment or whatever. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I think you're lost. Like go ahead and unfollow and go like you're lost here. Like this is only good vibes and you're not like, 
you're never going to get into my community. You're not going to, you know, sign up for anything like you and I are just not aligned. So you're more than welcome to find that unfollow button and let yourself out. Bye. That's it. Like, I'm not, I'm not, or people will, you know what, I'm going to unfollow. Please do. I don't need the goodbyes. You know, like I'm good. I'm good. But, but so, so learn why you're good. Learn who you want as your, as your friends, as your circle, as your community, who is it that resonates with you on that same energy as you lead by example and watch the people manifest themselves into your life. But it starts with you. Like at the end of the night, you're the only one that you're going to bed with yourself. You're going to bed and you're saying, this is how I won today. This is what I did that was so epic today. And it could be that you made yourself dinner. One, good job. That you went, you said you were going to go on a run and you did it. That you said you were going to do, like start saying things and actually doing them and then see your self-confidence actually grow. Mm -mm. And I love the fact that you said, write it down. It's so important yeah. to write it down because I think when it swirls in our heads, we think that we're doing the work, right? We're like, yeah, you know, I know I'm a good friend because I'm loyal. I show up, you know, you can call me at any time and you know, you're going to get me, you know, whatever it is that we say, but it's all swirling in our heads, but because we never see it on paper, it never really cements within us. But when we sing it back reflected at us, there is something powerful about that. It's like a very, um, it's a process where you can look at something in a more objective way. And not be like, oh, you're like, oh, I'd hang out with this person. <laughs> you know, so I can't be that bad. And, and you know what the other beautiful thing is, is one, you'll write it down. Okay. And let's say, well, I'll just take your example that you're like, oh, well, I'm a good friend because when they call, I'm there. And you know what? Give me three things that make you a good friend, for example, or that okay. would make somebody a good friend. Um, so for me, loyalty, uh, vulnerability, right. and humor. For me, those are. Yeah, I love it. See, you went you've done work. You went straight to values. Most people, which is great. So now all you have to do is attach these values and look if the other person has that is aligned with your values. That's beautiful. Most people will say, I'm a good friend or I'm a good mom because I made their bed, made their lunch, do the homework, like you're doing tasks. However, you don't know if that's the other person's definition of a good friend or a good mom. Mm. For example, if like my definition of being a good friend is not one that I pick up your phone right away. My phone is always off. I coach all day. I will not answer my phone. I don't, I don't like that. So if that's your definition of you being a good friend, and if that's your expectations of, I need to be with somebody that answers my phone whenever I, I, I need it, I will politely tell you, you and I are just not aligned. Let's not waste each other's time. I'm never going to meet those expectations. Let's just hang out. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So instead of you trying to in relationships and friendships, it's like find out what's their definition of a of a of the right relationship, mm. of the right friendship, and see if it's aligned with you. Maybe you don't want to sign up for this relationship. Maybe you're not into that friendship. Like, but then all of a sudden you're signed up to the relationship. The girl's super needy or the guy's super needy, and you're like, why am I getting eight texts a day? I don't want this. That's not my definition of love. Mm. That's not, where are you? How, that's not, that's my definition of, you know, control. I don't like to be controlled. I like to be free. So it starts with you. What's your definition of relationships? What's your definition of friendship? And then you can come to the other person and find out what their definition is and then see if it's a match. And if not, if it's not a match, it doesn't mean anything about you. Mm. People are trying to get validated, trying to be, no, but will you love me? No, but please, why? You're, we're not aligned. Oh, that was so, like, I loved listening to it because I thought, you know, the greatest advice is always the advice that you're like, that makes so much sense. <laughs> right? right? you're like okay so this does not sound so complex it sounds like it makes it's like why is not ev like everyone doing this because it makes okay you this is how you feel love friendship or whatever it is that is not how I communicate it. that is not how I feel it and since that is your expectation and I'm not going to meet that 
it's fine if we just hang out like time and time again, but I'm, I'm never going to be your best friend. I'm never going to no. be in a relationship with you because that's just, I'm never going to date you. Exactly. It's so simple. If you go, instead of doing this after year five, when you're waiting for the ring or the proposal or whatever, how about you hit that on date two? How about you hit that on day two, which is, okay, well, what's their expectations of the ideal relationship? Because you might, and it has nothing to do with you. The beautiful thing is once you hit that on day two, you're not in love yet. You don't really give a shit yet. You're having a nice time. You're talking. You're getting to know each other. We'll get to really know each other. If you are on a date with me, I'm going to be like Sunday nights. I'm at the tribe. I work. So if you're like, no, I need somebody that's always at home with me and blah, blah, blah. And home at five, honey, <laughs> let's end this right now. I'm not that. But instead of me having to hit it and hit it and hit it. And every time I'm leaving to go to work, where are you going? Why are you doing it? I thought we, we, you know what you married, you know what you signed up for. And I will tell my husband, you know what you signed up for? Because that was clearly, that was clearly discussed. Day two, actually probably even date one. <laughs> I love it. And I think what you saying, um, uh, I've got this YouTuber friend, she's incredible, but she said, when you go on a date, how about asking, you know, do I like this person instead of being like, oh my gosh, are they going to like me? Are they, yes. should I adapt and adjust to this individual? Because that comes from a place of low self-worth and low self-esteem. Whereas when you like, you know, you've done the work on yourself and you say, okay, I know these are my strong points. I know what I'm bringing to the party and I know what I'm looking for. And if this yeah. person's not going to hit that, it's okay. Does not make them a bad person. Does yeah, not make them a bad person. Friends, but you're just not going to go into this. And the problem is you then end up creating this fairy tale romance of, oh my God, we're going to do that. But why? It's not even there from the beginning. It's just, you didn't look at it and you didn't ask the right questions. And now you're a year and a half trying to change this person. Why are you changing that person? Why don't you just get to know the person? See, but first you need to get to know you, know what it is that you want, know what it is that you're looking for, get to know that person. Are we aligned? Yes or no? That's it. If not, you're wasting your time. It's like that in friendship. It's like that in business. It's like that in everything in life. Imagine if you just got clear on what is your definition of your 10 out of 10 in your relationships, in your interviews, in your, the people that you want to be. Know what it is that you want. Speak it into existence. And guess what the world's going to do? Start manifesting that into your life because you're resonating from that energy. It's very, very simple. And then you can actually start to have a really epic life because you're not wasting your time with a bunch of losers that would not be aligned with you to begin with. Mm. They're just not aligned. It's not that they're losers in their life. They're phenomenal. They're just not the right fit for you. I love, love, love that. So what are some books or people that you really love and that you know, you said that you've got your community who, you know, you listen to you in the morning and in the evening. Are there any people that you listen to and you really love? Yeah. So of course. So I love to, for me, it, it's, it's, I, I love to speak to people that are in my space too. So, you know, a great friend of mine is Peter Sage. I also run his personal brand and stuff like that, but he's, you know, I, 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 Peter Sage is phenomenal. Eric and Mead is again, great friend of mine. We speak in the morning too. I love that Joel Brown. Like these are all my friends that are also in the space and Tony Lister, like when I need to get my head back in the game or go a little bit bigger or, or have these fun, great conversations. I love going to that. And then to me, you know, my two core best girlfriends as well. Those are like my go-to. And then after that, there's my family. Mm. I love that you said when you need to get your head back in the game, because yeah. a lot of people would look at you and say, you seem like you're so on all the time. And yet it seems like you're, all, you're still always doing the work. So for people who say to you, you know, does it ever stop? Does the journey ever stop? What do you say? Especially the personal growth and personal development journey. Does it ever really come to a space where you can be like, no, I'm done. I'm all good now. I don't want that to stop. Why would it stop? It's a journey. Like I'm not trying to get to a goal like that. You know, people always set goal. I set goals, of course. And I, but that's not the, that's not why I'm doing this. I'm into the journey. Like I'm loving every moment of the journey. 
You know, I love that. I love going in and, and what I create with is, you know, I have a huge whiteboard in front of me and I have them all over my office. And it's like, my favorite place to do is just to go into my head and create. Like, I, I, I love that. Like, that's who I am. It's not like, oh, and people ask me this all the time. It's the weirdest thing. Like, well, do you ever stop? Stop what? I'm so confused. Like, for what? To watch Netflix? To just, yeah, if I want to, but, and then I'll want to connect with people and I'll have that. But imagine if I have the opportunity to create a life that is about impacting other people to live their best life. And imagine if I could tap into my audience and grow my audience and find out how are they struggling and for me to create, you know, whether it's product coaching, group coaching events, you know, retreats to help them with that. Like, I don't, why would I ever stop? That sounds terrible to me that this is the game. Like, this is what I do. You know, it's like, will I ever stop raising my child to be a phenomenal child? Of course not. Will I ever stop? I'm not done. I've, work to do we all have but it's beautiful work it's there's it there's magic in the work Mm. and so what's next for you when you when you sit and you visualize you've got your book that's soon to be out um and then after the book what are you envisioning for Sonia I love look I you know COVID's been great to me because I've been able to you know touch over a hundred thousand people in this year like virtually and stuff but the truth is as much as I, I I'm, I'm very grateful for that I miss live events like I cannot wait to you know I started traveling again that sound that's really fun but I miss the stage again I miss retreats I love taking people on experiences um, so that to me you know yes we're gonna do you know the, these great a group coachings that I'm able to do and bring in phenomenal speakers and the best of the best. That's really fun. And I'm able to touch so many people in the world, but I want to, I want to hug people. Like I want to see you live. Like, you know, like that, that really gets me excited. So for me, it's really to manifest more of the live events, get back on stages and just, you know, touch and, and, and see community that I've built all over the world, but I'm ready to go out and play with them. Oh, that makes me excited. So to you, as we start to wrap up, what is real success to Sonia? Uh, Just being able to, real success to me is able to wake up in the morning and just go like, yes. You know, just to be like, that's it. Like, like not, it's not a, a dollar. It's not a relationship. It's nothing. It's just waking up in the morning going, wow. Like I'm in so much gratitude like gratitude for the life that I am able to live, the values that I'm able to bring to other people, the connections. I'm all about love and connections, like the amazing people I'm able to meet. And then the amazing people I'm able to introduce to my community too. Like that to me is real, like being successful is just being happy and content and, and, and just in, in, in joy with your own self. And that, resonates with so many other people and and once you're in that trust me people feel it and they'll want that for themselves and that's beautiful when we can have a life about each other and and getting back to like what really counts in life Hmm, I love that definition and the final question is what is something about you that we cannot find on google so much. What is something about me that I can't find on Google? Um, what is something about me? Huh, a lot. Um, <laughs> remember I told you I don't, I'm like really good at giving advice. Like that. Uh, that, that, what is something about, and there's so much, I could write a book about it. Um, I think that, oh, that's a good question. I'm, I'm literally like seeing all the different places that I live <laughs> in. Everything. Uh, I love it. I think it's, it's really funny. So one of the things that is not uh, Googleable is I, um, when I was living in, in LA and asked to do this really big movie project, I also got the opportunity to uh, be a management consultant in bread in Brentwood, Tennessee. So I lived in, and nobody knows this. I lived in Brentwood, Tennessee for about almost a year of traveling everywhere to build, to help build hyperbaric chambers 
to help, um, uh, I can't say cure, but to help in health benefits of hyperbaric chambers. So that's something that nobody knows, that's for sure. <laughs> Oh, wow. It's an exclusive right here. And I love right? it. Right? <laughs> Sonia, it has been both an honor and a privilege to speak to you today. Thank you so much for your time. You are so good. You're so wonderful. And your energy is just so beautiful inside and out. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you. Oh. I absolutely loved this conversation. And if you did too, you want to check out the interview I recently did with Billy Selekani. He speaks about the power of really believing in your dreams. If you have yet to check out the Real Success community, make sure that you are looking in the show notes below or attend one of our free exclusive events that we throw on a consistent basis. Make sure you are keeping up with us. Now, until next time, I look forward to serving you again next week. Take care.